hello guys welcome back to the new video so in this video we will create a service class for the study session timer but what exactly is android service why we need android service in our application in android development a service class refers to a component of the android operating system that allows you to perform long running operations or background tasks without the need for a user interface. They are typically used for tasks such as playing music in the background, fetching data from the internet, or performing other background operations that should not be interrupted by the user's interaction with the app. But why we need the Android service in our Smart Study app? Since in our app, a user can start a study session timer and once the timer will start, so that timer will not be affected whether the phone is in use or is in a lock mode. Timer will keep running and it will notify to the user through the notification. So here in our session package, let's create one class with the name study session timer service. Here we need to extend this class with the service class. Here this one coming from the Android. So here we need to override two functions. First one will be this on bind. And next we will have this on start. There are two main types of service classes in Android. Bound service. These are services that are bound to components usually activities. Bound services allow communication between the service and the component that binds to it. They are used for tasks that require interaction between the service and the component like fetching data from the service and updating the UI of an activity. And next we have this started service. These are services that you explicitly start and stop using start service and stop service methods. They are used for tasks that needs to run independently for an extended period such as background music playback. So in our app we will implement both these services and you will get more understanding once we start writing the code. First we will write all the code related to this started service and then we will write the code related to this bound service and then you will also get the relevance of this bound service so for now let's just pass the null value to this on bound and this service class we also need to specify in our manifest file so let's open that so here after this activity let's use service and here we need to specify the service so it is suggesting the location of our class and one more attribute we will add this exported to false this attribute specify whether the service can be assessed by components outside of your app so here actually we need to specify false so outside of our app, this service class cannot be accessed. So let's go back to our service class. So here we will get the intent. So we will say intent. If it is not null, then we will get the action. And here let's use the let function. And with this action, we will get some string value. So let's use the when function and this it. So I will create some constant value for all the possible actions. So for that here in our util package, let's create one file with the name constant. So we will be having these three actions. So let's use these constant values in our when block and let's import this constant value 
and here when we will get this start action string then we will provide this code and in the same way let's use other two actions now next thing how these intents will be passed into this service class so for that here let's create one file with the name service helper and here let's create one function with the name trigger foreground service so this function we will use whenever we need to pass the action to that service class so here wherever we will use this function we will pass the context and the action so we will use this intent class and with this intent we are also passing the action and then we will start our service so where we will use this function let's go to our session screen so let's scroll down and here in our button section we have these three buttons so the first button we have this start button click so whenever user will click on this button so we will pass our start action so here let's use that helper function and this function needs the context and the action so for context let's scroll up and here create a context so in compose this is how we get the context so let's use this context value and action we will use the start so let's copy this constant import this by pressing alt enter and here when we press the cancel button so we will use the cancel action so instead of this start let's use the cancel action so let's go back to our service class and now we will write the code here so here when our action will be start so we will start our foreground service so for that here let's create one private function with the name start foreground service and let's use this function here so here in our start foreground service first we need to create a notification channel so here after this let's create one more private function with the name create notification channel and let's use this function here so here let's use and in this notification channel we need to provide these three things id name and importance for this channel id and channel name let's create constant values in our constant file so this will be our channel id and this will be our channel name so let's use these values in our notification channel and let's press alt enter to import and next this notification channel name and for the importance let's use notification manager dot so here we have this list for setting the importance value so for our notification we will use this importance low because this timer notification will be there for hours if we use something like importance high so it will also make sound so it's best to use this low importance so here this is giving error it is saying that this notification channel is only required on the phones which are using api level 26 or more but we have set our current minimum api 21 
so we can simply put this notification channel in a if block Now this is not giving error anymore. So this channel we will provide to our notification manager. So the notification manager object we will provide through the dagger hilt. So for that here in our TI package, let's create one more file with the name notification module. So for this notification module, again we need to annotate this with module. So dagger should know that this is a module where it needs to find the object. And again, let's use this install in annotation with this time we will use service component because these object will be uses in the service class. So here let's create one function with the name provide notification manager. So here we will create the notification manager object. So let's provide the return value. And here let's use this return. And we need the context. So this dagger will provide us the context. Application context annotation. And here we will say context dot get system service. So here we will say this context notification service let's cast this as notification manager so like this we will create the notification manager object and here we need to specify that this is a provides function and let's also use this service scoped annotation so dagger should know that this object life will be available to the service class. So let's go back to our timer service and scroll up and minimize these imports. And here first we need to annotate this class with Android entry point. Because this service class is an Android component and we are telling dagger hilt that this service class requires some dependencies to be injected into it. So let's access that object through the inject annotation. So let's scroll down and after this here let's use that notification manager dot create notification channel and provide our channel value. We need to use this line inside that if block like this. So after creating the notification channel here, let's use the start foreground function. And here we need to specify two things. First notification ID and then the notification. So for the notification ID, let's go to our constant file and create one constant. So let's use 10 as the notification ID. So this constant we will use in our service class. Now next thing we need to provide the notification. So we need to create the notification how our notification will look like. So again let's use the dagger hilt and there we will create the notification and use in our app. So let's go to our notification module and create one function with the name provide notification builder. So let's use the return type of this function as notification compact dot builder because with the help of this notification compact we will create our notification. So let's use this return keyword with this notification compact dot builder. So in this builder here we need to provide the context and the channel ID. So for the context again we will use this and for channel ID we also have created a constant. 
so let's use this in our notification module here so after this we have this function set content title so here we can specify the title of the notification so let's use the title study session and next let's provide the content of our notification with the help of this set content text so the content of our notification will be these values so here we have just provided the initial text we will update this content text with the help of our service class and after this let's use that set small icon here we need to specify the icon of the notification so let's use the icon from our resource package this drawable and here we need to import this r value so let's press alt enter and let's use this ic launcher foreground this icon we can also use any icons here but since our app doesn't have any launcher icon so we will use this one and after this let's use this set ongoing to true so it means that notification can't be swiped away by user so this is how our notification will be created so let's go back to our service class and here in the same way let's access that object and scroll down and here let's use our notification builder dot build so when we will start our foreground service then we will build our notification with the help of this build function now when our action will be start action then first we will start our foreground service and we have created our notification channel and then we also have built our notification next thing we need to start our timer so that timer will keep the values of seconds and minutes so first thing let's scroll up and here let's create few values so i have created these values and i also have used these keywords private set because with the help of these keyword we can make sure that these values can only be written in this file and outside this file these value can only be read and here this timer object we will initialize later so let's scroll down and here let's create one function with the name set start timer so before writing any further code let's create one more enum class with the name timer state so in this timer state we will keep three values idle started stopped so first let's scroll up and after these values let's create one more value with the name current state so initially we will keep the idle state in this value and let's scroll down and here when we will call our start timer function then we will update our current timer state to started 
and then we will initialize our timer and use this fixed rate timer this one and here let's provide the initial delay to 1000 millisecond so for updating the first second we will take the initial time one second and then with the period of one second we will update next values so with this timer task we will update our duration value and we will plus one dot here let's use this seconds let's press alt enter so in this duration value we are updating one seconds with every interval first from this duration we need to extract the seconds hours and minutes and then we will update these these three values so again here let's create one function with the name update time units so here we will take the duration value and then we will use this two component so with this we will get all the values we will get hours minutes seconds and nanoseconds these first three values are relevant and this nanoseconds let's use just this blank space and now update our values so here this is how we will update these values but right now this is giving error these values are in integer but we need the string values so for this let's go to our common file in the util package and create a new extension function so this function is an extension function on the integer value and will return a string value so here we are converting this integer value into a string so with the help of this function if our string is not of two length then it will append this zero character so this will help us in showing those values which will be less than 10 so for 9 it should show 0 9 so let's go back to our service class and here let's use this function pad and here also but this hour value is long so first we will convert it into the integer value then we will use this pad function so now after this let's use our update time units then we will call our lambda function this on tick so here we will pass all the values which we updated here now let's use our start timer function after this start foreground service so with this function we will get these values through that on tick lambda and with the help of these values we will update our notification so let's scroll down and here create one function with the name update notification so here we will use this notification manager then we will use this notify function so this notification id we will provide the same we used in creating the notification now next let's use this notification builder and then this set content text so again we are calling this set content text which we used in creating that initial content here we can see 
so we will update this content text with the new values so here we will specify the content in the same manner now let's call that build function so let's hover the mouse and here it is asking us to add the permission of this post notification so let's go to our manifest file and scroll up here let's add two permissions user permission first this foreground service and next post notification and now it won't give error anymore so this function we will call in our start timer now let me go through you all the code so here when our action will be start first thing we will do is start foreground service so here i have created this function first we are creating a notification channel because there are so many different types of notifications so we need to specify these notification channels so here we are saying that if the version is greater than o or equal to then we are creating a notification channel then after creating this notification channel we have called this start foreground function so with the help of this function our foreground service will be started so this foreground service we will notify to the user through the notification so here first i have provided the notification id and then this notification builder to build so this will build the notification which we provided in the notification module this notification now our foreground service and notification has started next we need to do the main thing that is starting a timer and keep these second minutes and hours values so after this starting foreground service i have created this start timer function so in this start timer function first we have set the value of this timer state to started then we have created this fixed rate timer so for the first second it will take 1 second and then with the period of 1 second it will run so with each second we will update our duration so here initially this duration was 0 and then with each second we will update our duration with 1 second and then from this duration value we have extracted all these values and updated these values separately and after updating these hours minutes and seconds value we have used this on tick lambda so with each second we will also pass these values so these values can be used to update the notification so here with these values we are updating the notification so again i have created a function with the name update notification and with those incoming values we will use this notification manager and we will set the content with the updated values now the next thing we will provide the code if the action is cancel so here first let's create a function with the name stop timer so in this stop timer function first we will check if this timer is currently running if it is then we will cancel this timer and here we will also update our current timer state to stopped so after this let's create one more function with the name cancel timer so here in this function first we will make this duration value to 0 and then call this update time units function so because i have set this zero value 
so now each components of this duration will be zero and after this let's also update this current timer state to idle and scroll up and here call these two function one more function we need to create so let's create after this function with the name stop foreground service so here first we will cancel the notification with the help of this notification manager so let's use this cancel and here again we need to provide the notification id so it make sure that it is cancelling the right notification and after this let's use this stop foreground here use this stop foreground remove and after this let's use this stop self so here this is giving error it is saying it needs the api level 24 so let's use this more and surround with if check like this so after these two function let's stop our foreground service so here if our action is cancel then first we are stopping the timer then we are cancelling the timer means we are setting all those values to zero and then we are stopping the foreground service so here first we will cancel the notification then we will stop this foreground service and next if our action is stopped then here we will stop the timer now next since we are using post notification and we have added the user permission here in our manifest file so we also need to request the permission from the user so here in our main activity let's create a simple function where we will request the permission So to request the permission of post notification here I have created a simple function and here we are providing the post notification permission which we used in this manifest and in this function we are not handling that if user denies this permission then what we should do. So we are assuming that user accept this post notification request. So here in our on create function we can use this request permission function. Now let's run our app and see how this is working. Now let's click on this start study session button and here let's press start button. So here we can see we have our notification and our timer is also working fine. Now let's try to go to the other screens and we can see our timer is still running and this time let's close the op fully and here we can see still our timer is working. And this time let's lock the phone. And on the lock screen we can see our timer is running. Despite that we close the app. And let's open our app again. And go to the study session timer. And this time let's click on this cancel. Now we can see our notification has been disappeared. Now let me go through this whole code 
relating to this timer service so we can get more understanding first let's go to this session screen and here in this button section i have used this start button and this cancel button here i am calling this trigger foreground service function and providing the required action so this function we created in this service helper class and these actions we are receiving in our timer service so here in this on start command function we are receiving these actions so here we are checking with the help of this when if this action is start or stop or cancel so this is how this service will be worked now next what functionality we will give first let's open the device and here again let's start the timer and now our timer has been started so this time close the app and next functionality we will give when user click on this notification so our session screen should open because right now when we click on this notification nothing is happening so for this thing let's minimize this and go to our service helper class and here let's create one function So this will be our function and here we need to provide this request code. So again let me create the constant value in our constant file. So let's use this constant in our service helper and import this value. So what's this function? So here first we are creating the deep link intent. Since we need to go to a particular screen in our app by clicking on that notification. So this is called the deep linking. So here first I have provided this we need to view a particular screen and then this string and converting it into the URI. So we can also use any string here. Only thing we need to keep in mind that the same string we also need to use to that particular screen. So this function can match that string. And this session screen will be part of this main activity. And after this we are using this task stack builder because we need to maintain the hierarchy. Like when user go to the session screen by tapping on the notification and then after reaching the session screen user taps on the back buttons then user should go to the dashboard screen rather than closing the app. So now we will attach this function to our notification. So we created the notification in this notification module and here after this let's call this set content intent like this now one more thing we also need to do is here we are specifying that we need to navigate to this particular screen which match to this uri so we also need to specify this uri to that particular screen so let's go to our session screen so here in this screen we will specify this particular screen requires deep link. So here let's use this deep link parameter and provide the deep link.
so in this we are specifying first that this deep link action will be this action view because in that function we use this action view intent and for the URI let's copy this string so there will be no chance of mismatch and use this string as a URI pattern now we can run our app and see this so again let's go to our screen and and click on this start button so our timer has been started so again let's close this full app and click on this notification so here we can see it has opened that particular screen and our timer is still going on so again let's close this app and again let's click on this again it has opened the screen so it is working perfectly fine now next we need those hours minutes seconds values in our session screen so we can use those values to update this text also so here comes the role of that bound service so here we will bind our timer service to our main activity so we can use the data provided by the service class and can update our ui from that data so for that let's write the code relating to that bound service so again let's go to our timer service class and here we have this on bind function so first let's scroll down and here let me create one inner class with the name study session timer binder so here in this inner class i have created this get service functions so wherever we will use this function we will provide our study session timer service and scroll up and here let's create one value and let's use this binder value here now let's go to our main activity where we will bind this service to our main activity since we are using compose so there is only one activity in our whole application and this activity is holding that session screen so here we will bind that session screen to this activity so first let's create this service connection with the help of implementation of service connection so here let's provide the object of service connection interface and here we need to override two functions so let's press alt enter and implement members so to create the connection we need to implement these two functions so here in this on service connected we will bind our service so first let me create two values here so here first value is this is bound initially we will use this false value let's also use this where import this and then we have created this timer service so we will initialize this timer service in our connection first let's create the binder value and here we will provide this timer service and then this binder dot get service and is bound value will be true on setting up the connection and on service disconnected we will update this is bound value to false so first on start of our main activity we will provide the intent so here let's override that on start function and here use the intent
so on start of our main activity we will bind our service and after this here on create we will wrap our content in this if condition if this is bound is true then only we will show the content and let's scroll down and after this on stop of this main activity we will unbind our service so here what we are doing so on start of our main activity first we are binding our service through this intent and then in this on create we are keeping a check of this is bound and in this on stop we are unbinding our service so now we will pass this timer service value to our session screen through this nav graph so for this here we have one more parameter with the name dependency container builder let's provide and we need to provide this timer service value now we can go to our session screen and this navigation library will give us this timer service and pass our timer service to our session screen so now we have this timer service so here we will read all those hours minutes seconds value so this is how we will read those values now let's use these values in our ui so here let's scroll down and first we have this timer section so let's press control b so in this timer section we are using this hard coded string but now we will provide those hours seconds value through the parameter and then we will use these values so here what we will do we will take a row layout and use this text three times for hours minutes and second so here let's use a row layout and in this row layout we will use animated content because those seconds hours value will be continuously animating to the different values so we cannot use simply text rather we will use this animated content so this animated content will help us in animating that content continuously with each passing seconds and this target state we will specify to our hours string so if our hours string change then this animated content will animate the content so here we can use the text first we will provide the hours text so right now it is giving us suggestion that we also need to provide the label parameter so we can simply use the label parameter as hours text like this and also whatever string we will get we will update to our text so in the same way let's use animated content for other two values so for the second one let's use the minutes and for the third one let's use the seconds so now let's scroll up and here provide these values now one more thing we also need to do here so here when we press on this start button so the text and the color of this start button should also change to the stop when the timer is running and then if we click on that stop button then again it should go back to this start text so for this here let's scroll down to our button section 
so here in this button section we will use two values first one is this timer state and then the second value also first thing we will only enable this cancel button when our timer is not running so here let's use that enable parameter so here we will only enable this cancel button when the timer state is not in started state and next we will update our start button text with the help of when block So if the timer is running then we will show this stop text and if the user has stopped the timer then we will show this resume button and in the other cases we will show this start text and we will also change the color of this start button. So here if our timer state is in starting then we will use this red color otherwise we will use the primary color and the content color will always be white. And next for this finish button here also let's use this same enabled condition. Now let's scroll up and here in our button section provide those values. And here in this start button we will provide different actions with the if condition. So here first we will check if the current timer state is equal to started. Then we will use this stop action. And in other cases we will use start action. Now we can run our app and see this functionality. Let's go to our session screen and here we can see initially that cancel and finish button is disabled and in the timer text we also need to put those columns. So first let's do that. Let's use a colon and in the same way after the minute we will use the colon. Now let's run it again. So this time our timer text is looking good. So let's press start button and now we can see our timer is running and also that start button has been changed to the stop button with the different color. And we can also see the notification here in our notification also our timer is running. So let's press this stop button. So now our other two buttons has also been enabled that cancel and finish button. Now if I click on this cancel button so it will make these timer values to zero so again let's start our timer and this time again let's click on this stop button and if we press this finish button nothing will happen because we have not provided any functionality of saving the session into the database we, this thing we will do in the next video now if I click on this resume button then our timer will start from this this time. So let's press this button. So now our timer has been started from that 6 seconds. So we can see our 
timer is working perfectly fine now again let's close our whole app and click on that notification so here we can see our session screen has been opened now one more thing we also need to do here we can see our timer is not animating this text smoothly so we will give some good animation to this timer also so first let's stop this timer and minimize this and scroll all the way up low so here i will create a function that will help us in giving the animation this will be our function so here we will use two animation first for entering a new text and second for exiting that text so for entering the new text first we will use this slide in vertically animation so here we need to specify that initial offset so we will say full height to this full height it will slide in from the below and then it will go to the full height and here let's specify the animation spec and for this animation spec we will use this twin value the 600 millisecond duration and with this slide in vertically animation we will also use fade in because that new text will come with the faded value and then it will appear fully so here let's add the fade in animation also with this slide in vertically animation so again we can use the same animation spec with this duration so here we have provided the animation to the incoming new text now we will provide the animation on that outgoing so here we will use this together with and then we will use slide out vertically animation because this time it needs to be go away so again we can use the same thing like this and only thing we need to make this to minus so it should slide out from the above and with this slide out we will use the fade out animation and this animation spec we can keep the same so let's use this text animation in our animated content like this so let's use this value in all of our three text now we can run our app and see how this animation is looking so again let's go to our session screen and press on this start button so now we can see our timer text is animating perfectly it is sliding in from the below and sliding out from the above and also we can see the fading in and out animation so let's click on this stop button and again on this resume button so we can see our timer is working perfectly fine so this was all the code relating to that timer service class and in the next video we will give the functionality to this session screen where we will save these sessions into our database so that will be the last video so do subscribe if you don't want to miss that next video thanks for watching